Hi everyone, my name is Ono Coleman from Dynamic Leader Development. And the topic I wanted to bring to you today is why sometimes strategies and tactics aren't enough by themselves. I mean, just to clarify at the outset here, I'm not talking about business strategy or marketing strategy or demographic, geographic strategy. I'm talking about behavioral strategy um, in the business of helping leaders become better leaders, uh, teammates become better teammates, managers become better managers. And there are certain behavioral strategies that we all adopt. Uh, I want to be likable, or I want to be inspirational, or I want to be more coach-like. And sometimes as we're learning those strategies and tactics, they don't quite work. Or even if we've been trying them for a while, it's sort of not as good as when someone else does it. And so we want to understand how to make that more effortless and more successful to be able to try on these new strategies and get them to work. And to do that, we're going to need to look a little bit below the surface of where those strategies and tactics are. Um, and this was brought home to me a week or two ago by one of my clients who said, you know, on a, this deeper paradigm thing that you keep talking about, I think I'm finally starting to get how that's going to make the real lasting change. And I know I came to you wanting some playbooks and to expand my playbook. I've been promoted uh, in situation X. I want to know how to do Y, um, but it's not going to be enough, is it? the tactics and strategies. And I think he was right. I think it's not going to be enough. So I hope this couple minute video gives you a tour of that and maybe some new insights, new places to look, and at least an understanding of why sometimes change can be difficult. And sometimes when we're leading others, if you're a leader or a manager, a big part of your job is getting people to change their behaviors, to do more of the effective behaviors and less of these ineffective ones. You give them feedback for that reason. You hold them accountable for that reason. You give them coaching for that reason. So this hopefully will help you understand why sometimes that works better than others. Okay, so what we're about to look at is a map to understand how paradigms work and fit together. And I want to give credit to Keith Merrin for his excellent book on this topic. Um, he initially overlaid this visual on a neutral background, but I'm putting it on an iceberg because I think it's helpful to understand that some parts of our paradigms are actually quite visible to everyone around us, the outcomes we generate, some of the actions we take, the words we say. To some extent, the strategies that we implement are visible, um, but sometimes they're invisible as well. And so when clients or leaders talk about wanting a bigger playbook, they're often talking about this section of the paradigm. The problem is, even if a strategy is perfectly sound, how you implement it, based on what we're about to discover below this, um, can lead to either more effective results, maybe we'll call that green, or ineffective results, we'll call that in the red. So let's look at what's influencing your strategies unconsciously and subconsciously. There are two things. Number one, your needs. We all have basic human needs. We want to be loved. We want to be safe. We want to be accepted. We want to be included. Um, there's a whole longer list of universal needs. Uh, and your particular priorities might be a little bit different than the constellation that, that are my top needs. Um, but we all have needs. We develop strategies then to get those needs met. Uh, am I going to be likable or am I going to grab the power and be bossy? Whatever are my needs, it's going to influence my strategies. Secondly, we've all developed over time certain goals. Now, these may be a little bit hidden. These aren't our New Year's resolution goals that we'll proudly proclaim on LinkedIn or Facebook. These are more hidden goals, like um, to never be taken advantage of or to always look smart in a room or to not look dumb in any given situation or always seem like I have it together. These are not quite noble goals, but they're goals nonetheless. And the final layer, why did we come up with those goals? Why is it important to always seem like I have it together or to look like, you know, no one could take advantage of me? Well, it depends how I view the world and what are my beliefs and assumptions about how the world works? Is it a dangerous place? Is it a safe place about myself? Am I worthy? Am I enough? Am I not enough? Am I not worthy? And others, are others safe? Are others dangerous? Are others out for themselves? Are others generous? And so that worldview then creates certain goals that we very much commit to, which then influences our strategies. Some strategies are allowed, some strategies are not allowed. I've worked with so many clients who have trouble speaking up in executive meetings because they've been trained early on that it's rude to speak up or children should be seen and not heard or whatever it might be that makes certain strategies hard to lodge in that paradigm. And then when the strategy does get lodged, 
and the reinforces, it starts to get you some of the outcomes that you want that reinforces this cycle and this paradigm. Okay, so my beliefs were right. So my goal was right. So my strategy did work. At least it kind of worked. So I'm going to keep doing that. And you can see how it might be difficult here to just insert a new strategy and get a new outcome. Let's look at that in a little more explicit detail. So I want to imagine somebody's getting the new strategy to be curious and ask questions. Now, if you're in coaching or leadership development, or if you're a leader or manager yourself, you know this is all the rage right now. And I think for good reason. Be more coach-like as a leader. One of the ways you do that is you bring your curiosity online and you ask questions. Sounds innocent enough. If we look deeper though, and maybe my paradigm is that the world is a dangerous place and others are looking to take advantage of me, that might be because of my family or my upbringing or my culture or some small or large traumas that I've experienced. This is a totally legitimate way to view the world. If I have that paradigm, I might have some kind of sub goal around protecting myself and around being suspicious of others. Now imagine this neutral strategy being dropped into this paradigm and it's probably not going to be neutral for long. And then when I'm having this accountability or feedback or coaching conversation with one of my people, it might not feel very much like coaching. If I'm suspicious that others are going to take advantage of me, the types of questions and the style of curiosity or maybe suspicion that I bring, it's going to infect and contaminate that interaction. So in short, I might not be that good at coaching because I've got this under in the situation. Let's flip it around. Let's imagine someone who has a different paradigm. Um, whether they've had a good life or an easy life or a hard life doesn't necessarily matter. The, the point is, in this moment, their belief is, look, generally things are going to work out. And most people are honestly trying. They're trying their best. We all have our damage. We all have our crosses to bear. But, but people are trying. So therefore, I might have a sub goal where I want to help others grow and improve. If everything's going to work out anyway, and people are generally trying, um, it's going to lift all boats if I can help someone else improve their performance. So now enter the strategy of being curious and asking questions. And that's going to be contaminated, you could say, or influenced in a good way by my paradigm. And for the person on the receiving end of this curiosity and of these questions, it's probably more likely to feel like an empowering coaching session. So that's what we want is we want the strategy to fit well into the system. And in this is one of those cases maybe where that strategy slotted in quite nicely. There wasn't a lot of resistance like there was in the prior kind. So whether it's being more coach-like or speaking up more or being more inspirational, you're probably already doing some of those things. Maybe these are the little green letters. And then sometimes it's not working so well. Maybe some of those are the red letters. You're getting a mixed bag of results right now. Feel free, of course, to look at some of the strategies and tactics and actions. I love it when that works. You think of this as horizontal development, it's adding to your toolkit, your playbook. It's fine. Sometimes that works. Otherwise, if it's not working, that's the time to go look a little bit deeper. And I think this is what my client came back to me with was, you know, Honor, you kept talking about the beliefs and the beliefs and the beliefs. And I'm finally getting it, that that's actually where the real change is going to happen. Um, and what I think he senses is that the change could be permanent and enduring, and it doesn't have to be one of those willpower or reminder changes that sometimes happens with the tactics and strategies. Okay, so that's the terrain that we're covering. Um, I want to just end by suggesting a metaphor for how you might begin this exploration. If you're going to go down to the bottom of the iceberg, you're going to need some gear for that. Uh, and I like the scuba metaphor because you have both... Um, some weights that can bring you down, and then you have some floats that can bring you back up. And so if you're going down into these dark depths, I mean, who knows where you're going to find down there, some algae encrusted anchor and chain, you know, from the past? Yeah, maybe. I'd encourage you to try to have a spirit of exploration if you're going to do some of this thinking or journaling. Maybe I should add the disclaimer, don't try this at home, because it is good to have some guide and guidance. Um, probably wouldn't just put on a scuba kit and try it out for yourself. But there can be the spirit of exploration. And if I, you know, I find some algae covered thing, you know, I pull it up. Maybe if I can snip that anchor, it might be a little hard to snip an anchor with scissors, but bear with me in the metaphor. Um, that can actually produce a lasting feeling of relief and of ease in the way that I move forward in the world. 
So if you're hot to trot on this and this is resonating and striking a chord, you could be in luck. Um, we actually have a pilot coming up for a workshop, two-day intensive. So reach out to me if you want to be a part of that. Otherwise, if you're someone who is in the business of behavior change and if you're a leader or manager, this is actually a big part of your um, job to help usher people towards the more effective behaviors. That's why you have feedback conversations and coaching conversations and accountability conversations. Maybe now you have a sense of if some of the strategies and tactics that you're coming up with together aren't quite working, maybe there's a, a deeper layer that needs to be uncovered. So thanks for watching. I um, hope that was helpful to you and maybe give you some new perspectives and insights. Uh, reach out if you want to talk about this more or learn more. And until then, take care. All the best.